to wrap up our discussion of parallel and perpendicular lines, we're going to be talking about the distance uh, between perpendiculars uh, using perpendicular lines and uh, distance between parallel lines. How do we find that and how do we determine what distance is? A lot of what we're going to talk about is pretty common sense when you think about it. Uh, but then what we're going to do is we're going to use these con concepts to actually do calculations to find the distance between a point and a line then also find the distance between two parallel lines. Um, we'll do some samples, some steps to try to make it as easy as we possibly can for you to follow. We'll be using these concepts all year long and using the calculations that we use to, uh, to find these distances all year long. So this is a uh, fairly important uh, unit for you to grab a hold of and at least uh, understand what we're talking about in the concepts. Perpendiculars and distance. Distance between a point and a line. The distance from a line to a point not on the line is the length of the segment perpendicular, and here's the symbol, to the line from the point. Let's read it again. The distance from a line to a point not on the line is the length of the segment perpendicular to the line from the point. I've drawn an example down below. In red you have a line and you have point A. And in blue you have several lines, several line segments that are drawn from point A to the line. And let's just go ahead and name that line L and make it official. Create it as a line, with arrows and all whatever, to line L. Okay? Now what we want is the distance from the point to the line. And that distance is going to be the perpendicular segment, the length of the perpendicular segment from point A to the line L. Okay? I think it's pretty obvious for you to understand that that's going to be the shortest distance. Anything other than that is going to be a little longer. Okay? Why? Because you're going to have, if you find the distance, you're going to have just here, you just have a y value. There's no x value. Here, in order to find the distance, you're going to have an x and y value. You're going to have to find the length of that hypotenuse. And therefore, it's going to be longer than any one of the sides. Okay? So if this is a right triangle, well, what's the shortest side from here to here? It's obviously not the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is going to be the longest side. It's going to be the leg that goes straight to the line and is perpendicular to it. Very simple concept, something you can understand. Shortest distance between two points is a straight line, not necessarily. Shortest distance between two points is a perpendicular path to where I want to go. Okay? So that's the concept. I have one more concept we need to get into, and then we'll get into the meat of how to do these things. Next concept we want to talk about is the concept of equidistant as it pertains to parallel lines. Equidistant, two lines in a plane are parallel if everywhere they are equidistant. It means that they are the equidistant apart. Well, the distance that we're talking about is what we talked about previously, formally, is the distance between the parallel lines is the perpendicular distance from one point on this line to this line from one point here to there, and if all of those distances are the same, in other words, if we have AB is equal to CD is equal to EF is equal to GH, then that continues ad infinitum, ad nauseum. That means that basically those two lines are parallel because they're the equal distance apart, which as we know, means that they will never cross. Understand that we're talking about the perpendicular distance between these two lines. A point on this line, a point on this line, and this line. The perpendicular distance between a point on this line and this line, and vice versa. So, if everywhere they are equal distance, then those two lines are parallel.
here's some sample problems that you'll be exposed to and need to know how to do. Basically, perpendiculars and distance, what we want to do is we want to find and create a segment that will show us what the distance is from point C to line AB. Well, line AB goes right here. We want to find the distance from point C, which is right there, to line AB. It's going to be the perpendicular distance. So we would simply draw a segment that would be perpendicular from C to line AB. On this one, we want to find the distance of raw segment that will show us the distance from point W to line ZY. Here's ZY right here. Here's point W. So we're simply going to draw a line, a line segment from W that is perpendicular to ZY. And the next one is very similar. We want to find a segment or create a segment that will show us how to get the measurement from point M to line LN. Well, this one's a little interesting because M, if we draw that perpendicular, lies outside of the triangle. It's okay, this line continues to go, and all we're going to do is continue that and draw that auxiliary line out there uh, and extend line LN. And then we're simply going to draw this segment perpendicular from M, point M, to line LN. That's how you do those problems. Okay, these are pretty simple to see. We're just going to draw a perpendicular from the point to that line or line segment. This one's a little bit more challenging. You have to extend this line LN, okay, outside of the figure, and then draw the segment perpendicular from the point that it's requesting. Now we're going to look at uh, actually calculating some distances between some equations of lines. Um, some rather simplistic lines, but still, still need to know how to do this. We've got y equals 5 and y equals negative 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw those lines and see if we can figure out how to calculate uh, their distance. Y equals 5, that would be we go up y equals 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now what's the slope of that line? There's no x, so as a result we're looking at, you know, it's just a y across there, isn't it? So all we've got really is we've just got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we've just got a y that looks like this, don't we? It goes right across there, and then we've got another y that looks like it goes right across here. Now those two lines are going to be parallel because they have the same slope, that is no slope or zero slope. What's the distance between them? Well, we're fortunate because guess what? The y-axis is perpendicular to those. All we have to do is figure out the distance on the y-axis between those two lines. And what is that? 5 above and 3 below, so the distance equals 8. Okay, let's look at this one. We've got a y equals 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Comes up, we draw that line. Looks like this. We've got another line, y equals 2. And again, those lines are parallel to the x-axis. So that makes them perpendicular to the y-axis. All we have to do is find out what the distance between those two is. In this case, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our distance on this one is going to equal 5. Okay? You're going to like, all right, these are easy. Yes, these are the simple ones. Now let's look at this one. X equals 4. Everywhere X equals 4. Well, what does this line look like? What's the slope? Hmm, don't know. Don't have a y-intercept either. All we've got is an x equals 4. Well, if everywhere x equals 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, that line's going to be what? That line's going to be parallel to what axis? The y-axis. Well, if it's parallel to the y-axis, what is its slope? Huh? 1, what's its slope? You're going to need to know that on test. Okay. All right. They're parallel to the y-axis, which makes them perpendicular to the x-axis. 
So now all we have to do is find out the distance along the x-axis between those two. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the distance of this one equals 7. Okay? What's the slope there? Undefined. This one, very similar. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? We have a slope of undefined slope. Because you're going to be undefined if you ski down that thing. You're going to be hard to find and undefined if you ski down something that looks like that. Okay? They're parallel to the y-axis, making them perpendicular to the x-axis. So what's the distance between those two? d equals 3. Alright? Next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at some that are a little more difficult than that, that actually have slope, y-intercepts, and actual uh, slope-intercept form of the equation, and uh, see what we do to them. We're going to identify the steps, and then do some samples. Now we're going to talk about the steps necessary to find the distance between two parallel lines that are in slope-intercept form. They actually have a slope, have an intercept, whether it's zero or not. You know, they're not perpendicular to the axes. They're not the easy ones to find. And um, so let's talk about those steps. Steps for finding the distance between two lines. Number one, pick one of the parallel lines and its equation and its y-intercept to create an equation of a perpendicular line. The distance we're looking for is the perpendicular distance between those two lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a point, an easy point, a y-intercept of one of those lines, and we're going to use it to create an equation that will allow us to find out what the perpendicular line is. Then we're going to set that equation of the perpendicular line and the other parallel line, the one we didn't use up here, parallel line to each other, set them equal to find the point of intersection. Now that point of intersection is a basically a collision. Okay, two lines are occupying the same space at the same time. Now if you're in vehicles and you're up on the town square and both of you are occupying the same space at the same time, that's a collision. That means those lines are occupying the same point. We want to find what that point is. And we're going to solve for the x coordinate. Let's go over that one more time. Set the equation of the perpendicular line that you just made, that you just made that equation, and the other parallel line equal to each other to find the point of intersection. Okay, solve for the x coordinate. Number three, replace the x in the perpendicular line equation with the x you found in number two, right here, and then solve for the y coordinate. So that's going to give us a point. Okay, that's going to give us a point. Then use the x, y you found in number 2 and 3 above with the y-intercept point from number 1 to find the distance between the two points and the parallel lines using the distance formula. So what we'll have is we'll actually have two points that we can use to find the distance between. Now some of you may be having a little bit of difficulty visualizing this. It's okay. We're going to do two examples. We'll do the graphs, show you exactly what they look like. Get these down. Why? So that you can go over them and use them as we do the examples. Write them down, take a picture of it so you can refer to it. So as I say step one, step two, step three, step four, you'll know what we're doing and how we're doing it. These are the steps that you'll need in order to do this. Fairly simple steps, but they go one on top of the other. Do them correctly, you get the correct answer.